over the last year or so, I've been analyzing patterns and other information on the upcoming MCM-based GPUs from AMD. And despite all the negativity around the PC community these days, it's hard not to be excited about a new generation of graphics that could bring the biggest leap in performance we've ever seen from gen to gen. Well, as it turns out, it seems that AMD are not the only ones working on a multi-chip GPU, as a new Intel pattern shows. Let's dive in and take a closer look at what Team Blue is preparing. The great thing about YouTube, and particularly channels like Cortex, is that you learn a lot of new useful things in technology and science. But to really dive deep and understand things in detail, you need to learn by practicing. And today's sponsor Brilliant lets you do exactly that. Brilliant is an online interactive STEM learning platform that helps you gain a deeper understanding of concepts in math, science, and computer science by actively guiding you step by step with hands-on visually stimulating examples and exercises. Brilliant is also constantly expanding their range of courses, so whether you're a beginner, an expert, or anywhere in between, there's an interactive lesson for your knowledge to grow. I really like Brilliant's Computer Science Fundamentals course, which has great lessons on subjects like Parallelism or Amdahl's Law. There are also courses in Machine Learning, Quantum Computing, and many others. To get started for free and try out everything Brilliant has to offer, visit brilliant.org slash cortex or click on the link in the description. The first 256 of you will also get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring today's video. So an MCM-based GPU from AMD is pretty much a given for RDNA 3. In fact, Twitter user Blue is Violet found a LinkedIn profile from an AMD chip designer where it's hinted at that Navi 31 will have a 5 nanometer chiplet and a 6 nanometer control die, same for Navi 32, and that Navi 33 will be monolithic. I speculated in past videos that I expected the second generation of Intel's GPU use Battle Mage to be chiplets based, and a newly published patent seems to indicate that that will indeed be the case. I should note that Cortex.tech writer Underfox was the first to find this patent. As a quick refresher, the AMD implementation of MCM features a mother chiplet that is the only visible GPU to the system, and a daughter chiplet that shares L3 cache with it. There's an orchestration happening internally in the system on patent package that distributes the work between the two chiplets. A control die is used for such tasks. Intel's approach is a bit different. Before we get into the details, looking at the author list, we see Murali Ramados here, who is Intel's chief graphics software architect and who works directly with Raja Kuduri. Most of the other authors are Murali's team. Many patents are a result of in-house research but won't necessarily see the light of day as an actual product. This list of authors, however, tells us that this isn't just a random patent, but rather something crucial to Raja's design team. If you are not familiar with SLI or Crossfire, there are currently two techniques for skinning the multiple GPU cat, alternate frame rendering and split frame rendering. These involve dividing the image up and split the rendering between the multiple GPUs installed in the system. Intel's approach takes inspiration from this to some extent. One key concept here is to have drawers partitioned in tiles and then sent to individual graphics dies. These then execute position-only shaders to determine full-frame visibility data for the drawers for all dies. This can be done in two ways, either as shaders on each existing execution unit or using fixed-function hardware to calculate the position data. In other words, either shaders are run to find the position data of these tiles or a separate piece of hardware 
exist just to do this calculation. The calculation being finding if there's a primitive present on one of these predefined tiles. So then each die owns one of these tiles. The visibility data that was calculated, either with shaders or with fixed function as we saw, is then sent to each die. So then each of the graphics dies uses this visibility data to limit geometry work to only relevant primitives. So say there's a triangle intersecting tile 0 and tile 1, the die that owns tile 0 will use the visibility position data to determine that it only needs to work on the portion of the triangle that belongs to it. So Intel's approach here is to integrate tile-based checkerboard rendering with distributed vertex position calculation. These are the two key components of Intel's MCM approach. Finding where vertices are and then assigning them to specific dies for parallel work. This will result in much more efficient scaling on multi-die GPUs, something that wasn't possible with SLI or Crossfire. One advantage of this approach is that you can add more dies to the SOC and get better scaling, because you can divide the image in more tiles, or assign only one tile per die, for instance. Now, how many dies are we looking at here? In the patent, Intel uses four dies as an example, but clearly states that any number of dies could be used. In the patent, Intel provides an example of how this process would work with only four GPU dies. Here, you can see that these dotted lines would belong to GPU die 0. These with no pattern would belong to GPU die 1. These with the downward sloping lines would belong to GPU die 2. And tiles with the checkerboard pattern would belong to die 3. So each die is responsible for each of the tiles that belong to it. The way this differs from the current SLI and Crossfire approaches is precisely in the distributed position shading. In addition to this, there's a load balance that happens thanks to scheduling. In other words, work is distributed to dies that are idle, while dies that are still working on rendering a tile will be left alone. Kind of similar to what we see in the Cinebench R20 multi-core benchmark, where cores are assigned to different tiles using core balancing. It's not the same thing, but somewhat analogous. So there are a ton of advantages to Intel's approach to MCM GPUs. Firstly, you might remember a couple of years ago at Intel's 2020 Architecture Day, where the company laid out its vision for its client products at around the upcoming 7 Plus node. So that's the node after the current in use, which is called 7, but it's actually 10 nanometer. Anyway, for the next generation of client products, Intel wants to implement a chiplet strategy, similar to what AMD has been doing, but on a broader scale. As seen in this slide, the idea is to transition to having individual IP dice for CPU, GPU, and I.O. This would allow for a much faster time to market and better yields. What's different here in Intel's strategy from, for example, AMD's Ryzen is that the IP is itself split into multiple chiplets. So, for instance, a GPU can have multiple chiplets even on a heterogeneous SoC, as shown in this slide from 2020. With this approach, Intel can focus on performance for general purpose computing by adding more CPU dies to an SoC, or focus on density for scalable compute, like adding more GPU dies in an SoC. What Intel didn't disclose in specific terms is what a discrete GPU would look like in this context, but one can expect a similar strategy. And this is why this new patent is so important. I suspect we will see an MCM GPU as early as Battle Mage, which will come after Arc Alchemist. Battle Mage should be ready probably early next year. This multiple IP chiplet strategy is how Intel plans to catch up to the competition because it will take only a year or less to develop new GPUs. So this would mean that Battle Mage will come to market not too long after Alchemist. What's even more exciting is the ability to mix and match IP, which means Intel could easily add more than just GPU dies to the GPU package, with things like an AI accelerator, media encoders, and of course stacked persistent memory and DRAM. We already know that XCSS, so that's Intel's equivalent to NVIDIA's DLSS, comes in three variants, a cross-vendor version, an optimized DP4A variant, and an Intel-optimized XMX hardware accelerated version of upscaling. What this means is that Intel could add fixed function acceleration in Battle Mage just to handle
handle upscaling. This also means that Intel can separate crypto accelerators from the regular cores and create a separate line of products just for crypto miners, hopefully separating the gamer and crypto markets. I don't know about you, but I'm super excited about the possibility of having different GPUs to match one's needs, where you can find different options with media accelerators, AI accelerators, ray tracing accelerators, all distributed in the GPU with their own individual dies. It's a smart strategy from Intel for sure. Of course, the challenge here will be managing power. Communication between chiplets will always cost more power than in a monolithic approach. Depending on the implementation, Intel's GPUs could be incredibly power hungry, especially if the interconnect fabric relies on PCIe. I know that Battlemage's cooler design is nowhere near as large as the RTX 3090, for instance, at least according to a few sources. So that would indicate that heat management is not going to be a problem. This pattern also shows how there's no need for developer intervention for this chiplet strategy to work, seeing as the tiles are all distributed on a driver level. <laughs> Does this all seem too good to be true, especially considering Intel's lackluster execution of late? Well, I'll conclude by leaving you with a quote from Roger Kaduri himself. As you know, solving the multi-GPU problem is tough. It has been part of my pursuits for almost 15 years. I'm excited, especially now, because multiple things are happening. As you know, the software aspect of multi-GPU was the biggest problem, and getting compatibility across applications was tough. So things like chiplets and the amount of bandwidth now going on between GPUs and other things makes it a more exciting task for the industry to take a second attempt. I I think due to these continual advances, as well as new paradigms, we are getting closer to solving this problem. Chiplets and advancement of interconnect will be a great boost on the hardware side. <laughs> Raja said this in an interview with Anantech back in 2019. Sounds to me like enough time has passed for this vision to materialize. I for one am super excited about Intel's upcoming GPUs, especially ones that make use of this chiplet strategy. Make sure you ask subscribe so you don't miss my future analysis and reviews. This video was made possible by my awesome patrons. With YouTube revenue close to extinct, it's up to you guys to keep smaller channels like mine alive. Consider supporting me on Patreon and get exclusive access to the Cortex Discord server, where you can become a part of a welcoming community of enthusiasts and talk to me directly, as well as get exclusive tidbits of information on what's going on in the industry. So join my Patreon today. Thanks for watching and until the next one.